I've only ever talked about 12 volt camper electrical systems on this channel, but we are installing a 24 volt system next week into our transit camper van conversion. In this video, I want to discuss some considerations for choosing a 12 volt versus 24 volt versus 48 volt battery bank for your camper electrical systems. In a camper, we are charging from our alternator at 12 volt DC, charging from shore power at 120 volt AC, charging from solar at anywhere from 20 volts to 250 volts DC, using power through standard 120 volt AC outlets, and also using 12 volt DC power through our fuse block for things like lights, outlets, and refrigerators. Adding yet another voltage into an already complex system adds confusion. But if you already understand these concepts and want to give a 24 volt battery bank a go, that's fantastic. But for somebody's first system, I've seen that adding a 24 volt battery bank into the mix adds confusion. I've even seen multiple times that somebody likes one of my 12 volt systems, but has also heard from somewhere else on the internet that a 24 volt battery bank is cheaper and more efficient. And then they wired one of my 12 volt systems to a 24 volt battery bank and fried most of their components, which is not something that's covered under warranty and gets expensive in a hurry. Now I define a small electrical system as anything less than 3000 watts of inverting power and less than 1450 watts of solar panels. So still a fair amount of power there. Now for solar, I define 1450 watts and under as a small system because that's the largest solar array that we can put on a single 100 amp charge controller at 12 volts. Any more solar than that, and we need to use multiple charge controllers or start talking about using a higher voltage battery bank. Now for inverting power, the largest wire that's available to all of us as regular people is 4 watt wire. 3000 watt inverters operating at 12 volts require 4 watt wire, and if more inverting power is needed, we need to start using multiple 4 watt wire in parallel to handle the current, which gets pricey, sure, but also makes fusing, wire management, and product selection significantly more difficult. Now, 24 volt systems can be less expensive with the caveat that you aren't connecting a 24 volt battery bank to 12 volt components and rendering them broken. A 24 volt 3000 watt inverter and a 12 volt 3000 watt inverter are going to be about the same price. But a 3000 watt inverter operating at 12 volts requires 4 watt wire, whereas a 3000 watt inverter operating at 24 volts requires 1 watt wire, which is smaller wire smaller lugs, and smaller heat shrink, all which means that the wire needed to connect the inverter to the Lynx distributor is smaller and therefore less expensive. Or another way to look at this is you can get more bang for your buck for the same wire size used. The same 4 watt wire that we can use to connect a Victron Multi Plus 3K 12 volt could also be used to connect to a Victron Quattro 5000 watt 24 volt inverter charger, nearly doubling the inverting power on the same exact wire size. Same story on solar. If you had 600 watts of solar on a 12 volt battery bank, you'd need to use the Smart Solar MPPT 150 since those 600 watts would output 41 amps at a charging voltage of 14.5 volts. The same 600 watt array connected to a 24 volt battery bank would require the MPPT 130 or even the 120 since those 600 watts are charging at 20.7 amps at a charging voltage of 29 volts. On the flip side, the big MPPT 150 100 when operating at full capacity connected to a 12 volt battery bank can handle 1450 watts of solar. But if we were connecting it to a 24 volt battery bank, that 100 amp charge controller could handle 2,900 watts of solar panels, giving you more bang for your buck on solar panel capacity on the same charge controller. All of the same principles I've already talked about can be applied to 48 volt systems as well, but 48 volt systems introduce a new problem. Wiring these systems is difficult because some parts just simply aren't available for 48 volt systems just yet especially when trying to charge from a 12 volt alternator or trying to power small 12 volt loads around the camper. Now there are 48 volt to 12 volt converters on the market, but most are no name brands that I can't necessarily recommend. Now Victron does have a 48 to 12 volt converter, but is 
on the smaller side and is really too small to power higher powered items around a camper like jacks or slides. Now there are some workarounds, but nothing that natively just works. Now there are a few options for charging a 48 volt battery bank from a 12 volt alternator for alternator charging, but it's not really a 12 volt alternator anymore. The best option is to get a second dedicated 48 volt alternator for your engine, which is a great and super powerful option, but is pretty expensive and parts availability is still lacking a bit as of making this video, but it's getting better. But the biggest problem that I have with 48 volt systems for campers is the big red battery disconnect switches that we all use in these systems are rated for 48 volts. And that's not a nominal rating, that's the actual rating and a 48 volt battery bank charges at nearly 60 volts, which is technically too high to run through one of these switches according to manufacturer specifications. Now there are DC breakers rated for this voltage, but at that point we're starting to talk about a main system disconnect that will cost a couple hundred bucks instead of the tens of dollars a master battery switch costs. Now these breakers are becoming more common though. Last year, Victron introduced the VE panel, which is a distribution panel of sorts that's made specifically to mount to the bottom of certain inverter chargers aimed specifically at the off-grid stationary market. Now I haven't really seen these in campers too often just yet as they are a bit bulky, but they do have a 250 volt DC breaker in them that is absolutely perfect for the main system disconnect switch. And if you're building a system for an off-grid house or cabin where you aren't powering from 12 volt loads or charging from a 12 volt alternator, a 48 volt system using one of these VE panels is an absolutely perfect solution. Attempting to wrap this up, these are my personal opinions on what battery bank voltage you should choose for your system. If you're building a system for a camper, this is your first system you've ever built, you'll have less than 1450 watts of solar, and need less than 3000 watts of inverting power, go with a 12 volt system. If you're building a system for a camper and need more than 1450 watts of solar or need more than 3000 watts of inverting power, go with a 24 volt system. If your needs are less than that, but you already know what you're doing and understand that you can't connect a 24 volt battery bank to a 12 volt component without converters in between and are trying to save a bit of money, consider 24 volt. Now, if you're building an off-grid cabin where you're not charging from an alternator and you're not trying to power 12 volt devices, Go with a 48 volt system paired with the Victron VE panels for a proper fusing and disconnects. Now I hope this video was helpful in giving you some insight on why to choose a 12 volt versus 24 volt versus 48 volt system for your camper van. In the next video, I could see in the background, I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> Now in the next video, we are jumping right into a start to finish camper van electrical install featuring a 24 volt battery bank. So tap below to check it out.